It's Saturday evening. It's time to talk about the very best comic books of the week with my good friend Drew from Comics Elite. Hey, Wes. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Saturday here. It snowed pretty hard here in Indiana. I'm sure you missed the snow. We got several inches. Uh, you want to swap places? How about that? No, I'm cool. Okay. So you ready to talk about some great comic books? <laughs> yes, let's do that. I'm tired of, tired of seeing snow. Well, the best comic book this week, bar none, Transformers number five from Skybound, Daniel Warren Johnson writing and illustrating. I'm running out of superlatives to describe this comic book. I'm very sad that Daniel Warren Johnson won't be illustrating it after issue number six, but my goodness, this thing is is so awesome. It's got like a nice little poignant moment when you open the comic book with with, uh, Optimus Prime and Sparky and all that kind of stuff. And then it just gets into all this action. You get to see the return of a lot of really cool Autobots, Decepticons. We get to see Optimus Prime fire Megatron's arm cannon thing. I, I think this is literally a perfect comic book. This is another like five out of five, 10 out of 10 for Daniel Warren Johnson. Very hard to do. Yeah, it is it's very, very hard to do with each issue being bigger than the next. And especially with, with this one. With what he's build a, building upon, like much like the Constructicons, if you will, he is building to a massive conclusion for issue number six. And the art in this is so damn beautiful, so detailed. Everything from the conversations with uh, Sparky and uh, Optimus Prime to the Decepticons to RC to the Constructicons at the end. Uh, it, it, it gives you everything you want as a Transformers fan and as, as a fan of beautiful comic book art. Um like you said, it's going to be sad to see him go after issue six. I don't, I don't want him to leave. Please stay, Daniel. But they've got to pay you. It's, you've earned the pay for this, man. You, they've got to pay you to stay. Oh, I, I will petition them to pay you to stay. This is arguably the best series in comics out right now from any publisher. Please, guys, do check out Transformers number five. You will not regret it in any way, shape, or form. If you haven't jumped on the Energon universe, it's time to catch up. It's absolutely badass. It's the best thing going today. Now let's talk about something from Mad Cave. Dear editor number two, Ryan Lindsay, or I believe it's Ryan K. Lindsay writing Sammy Cavella on art. This is a very strange book that took a very strange turn. The concept is that you have a, a guy with a deer head and hooves and stuff that works at a newspaper company. He's the only guy like this in the entire world. He ends up being kidnapped at the end of the very first issue. And now we've got a guy that's having issues with his girlfriend. She says, it's me or the paper. He decides to go with the paper in a very, very funny moment. He goes to the strip club, because where else would you want to think about kind of stuff like this? And he kind of gets to the bottom of it. It turns out this is a vampire story. What the hell is going on here? It's hard to describe what's going on in Dear Editor, but it's so mad. It's so out there. The fact that when people talk to this Dear guy, Buck, they're like, there's something strange about you, and they don't think it's the fact that he's got a deer head. Yeah, no one points at it. No one said it's just it's just normal. It's normal like breathing. No one says a strange thing. But yeah, you know, reading this book, it very much reminds me being younger and reading something from Dark Horse Comics, Dark Horse Presents. This could very, very much fit into one of those anthology stories from the from the early '90s from Dark Horse. And um, I dig it. I love it. It's great. And uh, and to be honest with you, Wes, I don't know if you thought this. But this is just me. I had thought we were seeing the origin of Buck with that guy breaking up with his girlfriend or wife and going to the strip club. I thought we were going to see the origin of Buck, how he got the deer head. But it's, it turned to be someone else. I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. But then, like well, he said, says at the beginning the the- that he's stressed out because Buck has been missing for three months. Okay, I must have uh, I must have forgotten about that caption box. But uh, but yeah, it's still it's a fun wild ride. You don't see where it's going, and yeah, I can definitely uh, go with this. I'm be, I'll be on board for issue three because I definitely want to see where it's going, and because it's unlike anything else on the market right now, and it's a page turner. It's enjoyable. Absolutely unlike anything else in comic books now, right now. Now you mentioned Dark Horse. We're gonna go there next. If you find this, I'm already dead. Number one from the Matt Kent imprint at Dark Horse. Not surprisingly, written by Matt Kent with art by Dan McDade, and I must say that. Matt Kent is utilizing Dan McDade a billion times better than Joe Casey is in Neil Before Zod, a comic book that I do enjoy. But this thing was so much more badass and cool. It's right in Matt Kent's wheelhouse. It's sci-fi. It's fantasy, kind of all put into one with an action spin on it. We've got a team of, uh, I guess, an elite team of super soldiers. Well, not super soldiers like Captain America, but like elite special forces guys that are going to this special base. You have to take, a, a, I guess, a portal that's out by the moon and you end up on this planet that's on another galaxy or whatever, and they're bringing a journalist with them for the first time. And when they're giving you the introductions, I was like, man, this team's badass. I can't wait to see what happens. 
Well, they don't make it, and she is basically lost with the one guy that survives, and they're trying to make it on this planet with these weird aliens. They look like they have wrenches for heads and metal tongues and all this kind of stuff. And it was uh, it was so far out there, and the art was spectacular. Yeah, it's a very kinetic comic. It's very fun. Like it's very like much like uh, um, Dear Editor. It's, it has you turn in the page because you want to see what's going to happen next. And yeah, I, I did not expect what happens to happen and by the by the what probably the sixth seventh page. It's like oh okay never mind that's all out the window now. And yeah, it just turns into a survival mission, and they're trying to figure out just how to survive, not just get back at this point, but just to survive in this strange new world. And, um, yeah, something happens to one of those characters toward the end. I didn't see that coming. Like, oh, okay, let's see what happens with this one now. But, uh, yeah, Matt Kent did a terrific job here with this this first issue of this sci-fi horror action series that he's got right here. This is a lot of fun. Do check this out, guys. If you're Like I said, if you're into sci-fi, if you're into action, if you're into horror, uh, you're going to enjoy this. Matt Kent did a great job here. And I do want to point out this is a special, like, prestige format kind of comic book. It's $8 because it's magazine-sized and all that kind of stuff. So it was a little bit more expensive under the Matt Kent imprint at Dark Horse. Let's go visit the big two because we do have some recommendations from Marvel and DC. One from Marvel Comics themselves, Night Thrasher number one from Jay Holtham and Nelson Daniel on art on this one. Didn't really know what to expect. I'm not really all that familiar with Night Thrasher, to be completely honest. Clearly a Batman kind of derivative character. And I'm completely bought in on this bad boy. The idea... Of this guy going in to close down his foundation because they've been ciphering off his billions of dollars and he doesn't want anything to do with it anymore. He's retired as the Night Thrasher and then he sees some freaking teenagers stealing jewels and that was clearly an organized theft kind of thing. The stuff going on in California basically and decides to come out of retirement and start beating up kids in costume. I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I want to read. Yeah, me too. And what's great about that scene is that I remember like the, the politicians are saying like, oh, don't worry. No, it's fine. You know, don't worry about it. They didn't really, they're just trying to survive. They're just trying to get by. I'm like, yeah, there you go. That, there's the politics from those cities right now playing out. They're just like, yeah, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, when in fact, no, it's not. But uh, yeah, I do love the stuff that with the shutting down the, the foundation he's had over the years and uh, the reintroduction of Night Thrasher. We get to see the suit again. And we get there also the reintroduction of another 90s character. And I, I didn't see that coming up toward the end where he's like uh, living in like in the sewers with the lot of the others trying to survive. Yeah, it's some great stuff. The action scenes are fun and kinetic. Uh, yeah, you guys got to check this out. If you didn't check out Night Thrasher, you will enjoy this. It's a good, does a good job of really paying tribute to uh, Night Thrasher from the 90s because it's been a very, very long time since someone's written him right. And they did it right here. And I will fully admit, there is a 98% chance by the end of this, the kids and that other character end up being the good guys, and Night Thrasher realizes gentrification is the is the villain. But right here, right now, Night Thrasher was awesome. Yes, he was, absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's that's a version of expectations. It naturally does happen. But yeah, for right now, it's solid. Now let's move over to DC Comics. Huge recommend for me for Green Lantern number 8, Jeremy Adams writing, Amon Kai Nahupan on art. Zermonico is normally the artist, but he is uh, obviously taking a little break. I think there's a Ron Mars backup if you like Kyle Rayner, but I'm here for the Hal Jordan stuff. They've got Hal Jordan and Razor having a discussion, realizing that the central power batteries are going out of commission. There seems to be a plan in place to actually take out the central power batteries. And Hal's like, well, I would like to go and tell the United Planets who are in charge of the Green Lantern Corps now what's actually going on here, but I can't escape like the atmosphere of Earth. My ring won't allow it, and he, he tries to get out a few times. They end up going to Madame Xanadu. Didn't make a whole lot of sense, but I did like the way they depicted her in this comic book. They might as well call her Madame Double Z Zadu or something like that. <laughs> and then we get these, this really awesome moment because we know something's wrong with the Spectrum. Three new Green Lanterns that are working for the United Planets don't even know who Hal Jordan is. They're that green. They have no experience whatsoever. As they're trying to apprehend he and Razor, they start changing their emotional spectrum. They go from green to yellow or green to blue, and it was absolutely awesome. Really building something enormous here, and you know the United Planets are at the heart of it. Oh, absolutely. They are behind this 100%, and uh, I really – he is – Jeremy Adams is doing a great job building a great mystery here. So many questions. I really, really hope he does not fumble the ball and is able to answer all these questions. Not just question, not just answer them, but logically, you know, that they make sense. Because I want to see how this all fits, how it all makes sense. And uh, but yeah, I do love what they did with the the the, the Blue Lantern, 
how he shows up and starts talking to Hal and and trying to get him to really believe, you know, come on, you can do it. If you just believe you can get out, you can get out of this planet. You can do it. But no, realize that something is wrong here. And like you said, we go to see Matt, uh, Madam uh, Double D <laughs> and uh, she is looking good. Oh my God. And, um, and to sure, like there's maybe something magical with his ring. And uh, that's the biggest question mark, his ring, like what is going on with it? And I'm very wondering, very, I'm kind of wondering if it's tied into Swamp Thing, if it's tied into that green, the, the elements of the earth, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, it's an enjoyable read. The backup with Jojo Mullins and Kyle Rayner, I, I couldn't care less. Uh, but yeah, the main story is why we're there, why we're there because uh, Jeremy Adams is doing a kick-ass job right now in Green Lantern. Jeremy Adams is literally picking up the pieces that uh, Jeff Thorne left behind and making a sensible story out of it that's absolutely exciting. The final recommendation, I guess this is more me than Drew on this one, Wesley Dodds, The Sandman Number 5, my favorite writer, Robert Venditti with Riley Rossmo, my least favorite artist on this book. It's something I love and hate at the exact same time. But this is a pretty cool story, especially if you like pulpy type stories from like the 30s and 40s or whatever. The Sandman, Wesley Dodds, has figured out who is behind all this stuff. And it turns out it was that general that was basically interviewing him. They want to use his sleeping agent or whatever. They needed to get his notebook because they wanted to see how he screwed up and how they could actually kill people. He gets in there. He finally gets to him. He gets to do basically an interview or I wouldn't call it an interview. It's more like an interrogation and finds out this is not the final boss. There's actually a dude behind all of it, that has kind of been aiding and supporting Wesley Dodds the whole time. And we might see that guy take out his butler. Yes, we might. Um, I tried to finish this, as I, I told you beforehand, but I am I I cannot stand Riley Rossmo's art. I, I, I really, really can't. I made it probably about halfway through, yeah, not even halfway, and I, I, I can't do it. But yeah, like you, I love Robert Vendetti. He is one of the best in the biz right now and one of the best at DC Comics. And even though we have him on the comic, it, that art, it's just, it's so rough to look at. It, it's just everything, everyone is just so inhuman and alien. It, 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 and I love Sandman. I love the Golden Age Wesley Dodd Sandman. I've got the Matt Wagner compendium on my bookshelf in the back. And um, it, for me not to look forward to reading this, and enjoy reading about Sam, Sandman and like Riley Rossmo. I, I just got to point to him. I mean, get rid of him. I'll probably be enjoying this. I have also had my fill of ball sack chins and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> you do have to go through some bad art to read a, uh, a Robert Venditti book because they don't always partner with the uh, best artists available. So I'm enjoying it That's for correct. what it is. Definitely not the best comic out of DC. That one belongs to Green Lantern. But this was a damn good week. The Transformers book was awesome. Dear editor, surprise, really, really cool. If you find this, I'm already dead. Really high recommendation on there. Not expecting Night Thrasher, cool book. Green Lantern uh, continues to really kick ass. So this was a good week, and I'll take the good weeks when I can get them. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I'll take, that's a win any day of the week. And uh, hopefully this, this trend continues throughout the month. Because, look, I, I don't like to trash books. I, you hate to trash books. I mean, we've got to call out the good stuff. And when we do, it's a great day. Absolutely. And if you're looking for more comic book reviews and maybe more coverage of all the stuff going on at Marvel, DC, and any scene, definitely go check out the Patreon because we do a two-hour podcast on there with my good friend Jim from Weird Science where we break all the new stuff, what's hot or not from DC, Marvel, any comic books, basically covering everything that we can. If you haven't checked that one out, there is a link in the video description, and I do invite you to come over and see what's up, and there's a free preview they can get right now. 